Man, you gotta have like the most killionaires of anyone. Is there a secret to like hitting a killionaire? Tell me about that. How are you so consistent when it comes to hitting these folks? So it's a big culmination of things. You need all the equipment, you need the positioning, and then on top of that, you need the spawns to work in your favor. But I would say what helps me hit killionaires consistently is just suppressing that reaction to any of the kills or shots throughout the multi and saving the pop-off for the very end. There's so many factors that go into it, but the, the most important thing is composure, for sure. Oh my god! Oh my god, bro, no way! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tide the Leader, a community-driven podcast dedicated to exploring the past, present, and future of Halo. I'm Mikowski. Joining me every week is my duo, Eli the Ninja, and today's guest is a staple of Halo content creation. During HS tournaments, he's usually firing up an awesome watch party, and when he goes for the killing air, you best believe he's throwing in a 360 beforehand. Please welcome Eli X. Eli, how's it going, brother? Doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast, and I uh, hope you guys are both having an awesome day. Hell yeah. Well, it just got even better, man. We have been looking forward to this for a while. This is our first grassroots content creator that we've had on the Tide the Leader podcast, so we're excited to dive right into it. So we have a lot to talk about, but as is the case, we like to start with the origin stories, and this is a question I've been looking forward to ask for a while because a lot of times people get you two confused as the same exact person. So uh, what was your origin story? How did you come up with that gamer tag? I originally was I, Eli, SpaceX. Um, it was a team that I was on back in the Halo 2 days. Um, it was called Innocence X. And over the years, as that whole team situation dissolved, I, I kept trying to remove the I out of the gamer tag. And I still remember vividly back in 2010, one day I randomly just checked on the Xbox 360 dashboard if it was available and it was there. Literally for years, I tried to get that gamer tag. So. It started off with a team situation and then just kind of turned it into my own brand. Now, when you came up with that gamer tag, were you aware of an Eli the Ninja in the community? And did you expect all these years later to, to almost be like a clone of each other? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've been aware of Eli's content since I was like 10 years old, you know, obviously the Dragon Force montages. And I've talked with him about this, even like the Step Mania gameplay on his YouTube channel and stuff like that from way back in the day. So, yeah, I've, al I've always been aware of Eli's content and, uh, you know, been a big fan since very young age. Like I guess that brings me to when we first met. I think it was, we've talked about this a couple of times, but it was, I think you, which event was it? I always forget. Meadowlands 2009 was the first time I met you in person. Okay, so yeah, I was, I think, in the pro lounge just playing, and I think you said Flame Sword. Like you could get Flame Sword's attention, so he was like, "Hey, can can you tap Eli on the shoulder?" And then like I remember Mike turning to me like in the middle of our game or after the game or whatever, and he's like, "Yo, there's somebody at the on the side that wants to talk to you." And there's yep. Eli with his long curly hair, a bit heavier set than he is now for sure. And he's just like, "Hey, man, uh, my name is Eli too. I'm a big fan of yours, and I, I love to make montages." And it's just like, "Yo, cool, that's awesome. Like, uh, you're gonna keep." doing good things and it's crazy to see like all these years later how much you've grown it's just been i don't know super cool for me personally to see your growth ever since that time to where you are now is such a massive difference it's definitely a funny story that you know hey people think you're i'm you all the time or whatever it was that you said it was <laughs> yep. even happening back then so it's uh, something we're gonna have to live with forever i think and yeah, you guys are attached at the hip whether you like it or not but Knowing that you guys like each other a lot and have had a uh, just a, a very rich backstory, it's really cool to see uh, all these years later, Eli and Eli still uh, sticking strong. Uh, going back to the beginning, though, Eli X, what were some of your favorite gaming titles when you were just a kid? Uh, obviously, I played some Mario games on the SNES and like Sonic on the Sega Genesis and stuff like that. But I'd say when I really started grinding video games was the Nintendo 64, you know, games like GoldenEye, Super Mario, Donkey Kong, uh, Perfect Dark, like all those all those games on the N64. But I'd say GoldenEye was definitely, like a lot of us, GoldenEye was one that I played a ton growing up as a kid. There's so much rage and like anger built up from like losing to my brother in that game that I attribute to making me want to get better at gaming when I was younger. <laughs> uh, did, did you have like a sibling or something that you played with in those early days? 
Uh, my siblings, I grew up with two older sisters. They they gamed here and there. Like we we played this game called Gauntlet uh, back in the day. Oh my god, and, I love that game. Yeah. yeah, that was a game that super fun. Loved playing that game. So I had a neighbor when I was ten years old. I would always ride my bike over to his house. He was the first person I knew that had like an original Xbox. It was my friend Casey. And he was a big reason that I ever got into like Xbox, like all the games on Xbox. Big shout out to him as well. Did Casey introduce you to Halo or what was it that drew you into Halo? Because that was a big step up for a lot of us, right? We were playing Super Mario 64, Donkey Kong, platformers, single player games. And the traditional PvP at the time was GoldenEye. But what was it that helped you transition to Halo? Originally, even back all the way in elementary school, we would have computer lab and the the computers in our computer lab had Halo 1 on the on the PC way Dude, back same. in the day when it was on Mac. Um, <laughs> so that's how I really got my first introduction to playing Halo. We are starting to see some great games come back to the Mac, but this is one of the coolest I've ever seen. This game is going to ship early next year from Bungie, and this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. Halo is the name of this game, and we're going to see, for the first time, Halo. Welcome, Jason. Thank you. Everything you're about to see is being rendered in real time on a Macintosh using OpenGL. My neighbor that I mentioned, um, he had an Xbox and he had Halo 2. And so I would bike up to his house almost every day. We would split screen for hours and like I met some of his friends that he had on his Xbox Live friends list and stuff like that. And you know, that that was really what um, motivated me to, to get an Xbox. Um, in in the first place you know he was like Dude. the first person who introduced me to to halo 2. you just unearthed like a, a core memory that i hadn't thought about in forever but we did the same thing in, in our school we had uh, the computer lab class and it didn't take us long to figure out that we could put halo 1 on the uh, on the pcs but i think it took maybe three days which were the most glorious three days of school ever we were just literally landing halo and then it got banned shortly after that so uh <laughs> yeah. definitely a common core memory that i'm sure a lot of people will unearth from the back of their minds as well as they listen to that Moving things along a little bit during the classic era of Halo, more towards Halo 2 and 3, there was a line drawn in the sand between content and competition. What was it that drew you towards both? Because you were even back in the day noted as someone that was not only a great content creator, but a competitor as well. So I would say what drew the line in the sand was just seeing how how big competition was and like how far the potential that it had for how far it could go. Because obviously, like as a kid, I was on Halo 2 forum and like watching everyone's montages that they were uploading and they're uploading clips on this website called Mythica. And um, so for me, I, I loved that portion of it because I was like, this is something like I can actively do right now. Like I just need a capture card. And I had my, my good old Dazzle and Pinnacle Studio and like throwing little edits together. And that was just so much fun to me, man, making montages going for multi kills and clips in general. It was so enticing to me and I had so much fun with it. And then as as I did that for a few years, obviously I knew about MLG with Halo 2. You know, it, it got on TV and everything, which was like revolutionary for gaming. As I was getting a little older, you know, I realized like, hey, I could actually go to these tournaments and compete and try to, you know, give it a shot and see how I fare against the best players. I want to actually bring up something that I found that I'm not even sure if you remember. You probably remember. This was back in the day of your I Eli X Gamer tag uh, in the clip. This was uploaded June 11th of 2008 <laughs> uh, <laughs> under this account, which I'm sure is not your account, MLG Pro Shot. When this whole era started, guys, when Halo content creation had begun, there was no YouTube. There was there was no website to go to to watch all of these videos other than halo2forum.com, but you couldn't just stream it from the website itself. You had to download the video directly to your PC and then pull it up in multimedia player. So what I would assume is that this is one of those videos that Eli X, a young Eli X uploaded to halo2forum.com and then somebody unearthed some five, six years later and, and then put up on YouTube. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it is, but I wanna watch the beginning of this at the very least, uh, cause I watched this earlier and it kind of cracked me up. <laughs> The missed shot first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you supposed to edit that out? <laughs> the slow mo that's just building up with the song. And then it's not even like a perfectly synced shot. Yeah. You know, no, no sort of like next gen editing to try to line Whoa. it up. Just straight slow mo. Was this on XBC? 
Uh, uh, some of these Xbox clips Live. probably some of these clips could have been on XBC because there were a couple times where you know like my XBL subscription Ooh. ran out and I would jump on Xlink Kai or XBC. I think the second one was okay. So he's clearly hosting all these, by the way, because he can get the <laughs> barrel jumps. I think barrel jumps are only possible <laughs> on hosts. Yep. Uh, Look at them lining it up. So did you edit this yourself at the time? Uh, yes. So at the time, I'm not sure if I if I used Pinnacle Studio or if I had actually downloaded Vegas at this point. But um, man, just some of these names oh. that are in this video, it's <laughs> it just brings me back, man. 1v1 montage. These are actually kind Oof. of popular back in the day. People would just 1v1 on lockout and record themselves doing like crazy kills. Dimdez. Dimdez mm -hmm. was one of the original yep. pioneers of the 1v1 Halo 2 Tosh. How old do you think you were when, when you made this? Probably like 10 years old, if I'm being honest, man. Because <laughs> like you guys said, even though the upload date was from 2008, Ooh! this this montage was uploaded far before that. And um, someone just downloaded it and uploaded it. So um, so this, this part confused me because they're shooting. Oh, this is from their POV as well. OK, so you flip to their POV. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, Eli X. You had a tag those, OMG, it's Eli man. as well. Yeah, those were big back uh, in the day when you had like an extra three month or something like that. You put you just make like a variation of your gamer tag. Well, I guess back back then it was uh it was the two month codes that would come in the game cartridges or like the game yeah. cases. Bro, is it me or was there something about the Halo 2 era of sticky grenades? landing on the head the party hat just the way it looked like like a flaming skull like I, I don't know man stickies just don't hit the same as they did yeah and the mechanics with them i mean being able to launch them across the map like it just changes so much shout out to my boy Riss in that clip he's an og from the back in the day man i had the pleasure of meeting him in person along with uh lil Payne, who was also in this video early on um i think it was orlando 2009 i got to meet those guys in person so that's so awesome. Yeah, Riss has reached out to me before, too. I know I've talked to him, and I've even played Halo 2 Silent Cartographer with him recently, mm -hmm. like within the last year or two. So he's still grinding Halo 2 100 years later, which is insane. Uh, <laughs> but speaking of which, like you're, you're talking about how this is somebody you met in person. Like, I feel like it doesn't get talked enough about like how you can form pretty impactful friendships with people online and then like I remember there's people that I played with for years and years and years before I ever met them in person. I'd still consider them like one of my closest friends. And then just coming together at an MLG tournament to meet them for the first time. And you're like, maybe don't even know what they look like before you meet them sometimes. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. So it's just an interesting thing to me that, um, that that's even a possible human experience right now because of the internet. Right. <laughs> right. And you know, like you said back then, there were there weren't like live streams and people when they were making YouTube content they didn't have their cam and stuff like that so like you said you would go and meet people that you knew for years you had no idea what they were what they look like or what to expect and once you meet them it's like the same connection in person that you have over the internet though which is like a really beautiful thing you know taking things back to the competitive side what was one of your favorite memories from competition do you have one in particular that really sticks with you I think one that really sticks with me was uh, 2009 Orlando. Uh, I was teaming with Vipe, Swiftkill, and Victim. Wow. And we showed up to the event with no practice. Like, quite literally, we didn't even get to play a game in the MLG playlist together. Only, I only wow. played with, like, a duo from my squad. Like, me and Swiftkill or me and Victim were playing matchmaking. Um, and we showed up. We were able to upset Driven by Adrenaline in winner's bracket round four. Um, and, you know, that led, we ended up losing winners round five, but that led to us making it out of open bracket and uh, getting top 32 for the first time. So that was probably one of my favorite memories, just showing up with a team that had literally no practice. And we just, we clicked once we were on land playing together. And uh, it was a really special experience for me because it, it showed me that even against really good players i can still you know make plays and make upsets at on lan at a tournament and now if i'm not mistaken uh you two also teamed together at some point in time is that right that's right yes. this would have been what halo 3 
Mm-hmm. Orlando 2010, actually. The yep, next year, that's... same same venue. Next year, I got the pleasure of teaming with Mikowski. We were also teaming with uh, Rapture and Kana, both awesome guys, great players. Um, yeah, that was a really fun event, too. Um, <laughs> Mikowski and I have some fun stories about about that event, for sure. Yeah, we uh, we land in Octagon in one of the hotel rooms till like 5 or 6 a.m. I think we played to 1,000. It was a four-hour match at least. And uh, when we got back to the hotel room that we were sharing, you know, it wasn't like we had our name under it or we were paying for it. I think we both slipped the guy who had it, like a $20 bill, and we're like, hey, can we crash on your floor for the weekend? And uh, since it was so late at night, the door was locked. Nobody was uh, awake. Everybody was dead asleep. And so after banging on the door for like a minute or two, I, me and Eli were just like, well, I guess we're... <laughs> I guess we're gonna just gonna tough it and sleep on the concrete. So we just uh, cuddled up next to each other on the cold concrete of Orlando, Florida, and, and uh, had a little sleepover outside on the streets. But uh, yeah, that's just always something I'll remember because it really just speaks to uh, just like the want to to not only just like create good content or place in top thirty two, make it out of open, get into the champ bracket, but just the want to to just be there, just to just simply be a part of the Halo community people like me and Eli, and and we're not the only ones, there's thousands of others that would be willing to quite literally sleep on the streets just to be a part of it. So that's that's always been a fond memory of mine. Absolutely. And even though the, the concrete may, may have been nice and cool, don't forget, we were in Orlando, so that air was humid <laughs> yeah. as it can be, man. That Disney resort, there's they have fountains and stuff all over the place too, so that didn't help anything, you know. I don't remember what time it happened, but someone in the room woke up and stepped outside you know, I don't know why, but they saw us out there and they were like, how long have you guys been out there? They finally <laughs> let us in and we, we got in the hotel room, fell asleep on the floor, and then we're probably back up within a few hours to go down to the venue, you know? I can't imagine you guys got any actual sleep. Like, I don't know. I, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, maybe 20 minutes here and there, like, and then waking up and then trying to get comfortable again. <laughs> like, that does yeah. not sound like the best experience. At the same time, you're right, Hunter. Like, there's so many people that just would just show up to the tournament without any real plan. Like I couldn't find a hotel to stay at. I couldn't find a such team. and such or even a team, but they're like, I'm just going to show up and figure it out. And like people would actually do that. And I remember one of my locals from Virginia, like I found him just literally sleeping on a bench outside of the hotel, <laughs> like with his suitcase and everything next to him. Like he brought a suitcase and he's just sleeping on a bench in out in the open like dude someone could just walk up and steal all of your stuff <laughs> but like uh, it was a common thing or people literally sleeping in the venue at some of the tournaments as well because they didn't have a, a hotel room so they would just like in the corner of the convention center like just be sleeping and this wasn't limited to amateurs and semi-pros um fast forward a little bit in my timeline to halo 3 i was able to be uh you know i was fortunate enough to secure sponsorships one of the first ever to bring sponsors to the uh, mlg circuit um and so we had a suite we had a hotel room we had all that good stuff to land in i remember finding chig and ace they were sleeping outside like they had you know just like you said on a bench suitcase out and all unraveled and i'm like dude you guys got a place to stay and chig was kyle's just like no I don't, I don't have anything figured out i'm just here to compete and he was already like a top 16 player at the time top 12 i think even and i was like dude i have i have extra space come on and and hang out so i housed a lot of the the pros back then when they didn't even show up to events with the hotel room and that's uh that's always been a, a fond memory of mine. I and I think it's honestly like your uh your duty uh as a part of the Halo community to just look out for each other. I agree. Absolutely. Just a small like small note on that Chig and Ace uh back in the day, they were one hell of a duo, man, and they had that uh that Tritage with uh was it Ghoster? Was that his name? It sounds familiar, but I I'm not 100% it was originally going to be a dual Taj, and I think Ghoster, who was like a really good editor at the time, said like, "Hey, I'll edit the video for you guys. Let me like let me throw a few clips of my own in, and we'll make yeah. it a tri Taj." And um, it's a really really good video. If you haven't watched it, or if it's been a while, I definitely recommend going back and checking it out. Speaking of montages, are there any that still stick out to you this to this day? Was there any particular montager that got you inspired to create content in Halo? A couple of the big ones that stick out for me in terms of like strictly montagers, like Furion was like a really big one for me back in the day. Um, we talked about 1v1 montages earlier and like he had one of the best 1v1 montages in my opinion. And he, he had montages in every aspect of Halo and was a great editor as well. I mean, he great he edited a video for Eli and Hysteria and all sorts of other people. But I'd say Furion 
in the super early age and then another person obviously for me was uh was campy he was like yeah. one of my biggest inspirations in terms of montaging and especially streaming he was like a big reason why i gave streaming a shot yeah where is campy does anyone does anyone know um i haven't talked to campy in a long long time but uh, he he talked to me through the reason why he stepped away without like going into too much because i think it's super personal for him tony campy was he was a personal guy right like this whole like online twitter twitch youtube stuff like he never wanted the attention he never wanted all the followers and subscribers he was a very personal secluded almost uh, type of guy so i think i think once he got to that breaking point where he was almost like a viral person on the internet that was the exact antithesis of what he wanted for himself and out of his life he'd obviously need to speak to it himself but with, like, again without going into that personal conversation i had with uh, with camp yet just to provide a little bit of reasoning and thought because i know that's something that's people still talk about all you know to this day is like where the hell did campy go he's a legend man and like like you said before he really wasn't someone who wanted the fame or all the viewership going viral and all that he was a very private person and um yeah like I'll, I'll text him from time to time just to just to check in on him the only thing i can really confirm for people is like he's happy and healthy as far as i know yep um i don't have details you know like like you said i don't want to expose any personal conversation details that i've had with him but you know he he's out he's out there still i don't think he really plays halo anymore as far as i know but um he's still yeah. watching though he's still watching he sent eli and i a note when we were uh you know when we were coaching and, and managing a squad in hcs season one starting from the depths of top 64 all the way to top two at the super and uh he reached out and, and uh messaged after that so He's doing well. He still keeps up with the scene from time to time, but you know, without diving too deep into the details, just to set everyone's mind at ease, because I know there's people who are like, what? is he okay? He's fine. Yeah. He's doing great. He's thriving, actually. He's moisturized and thriving. So don't worry <laughs> about Campy. He's <laughs> he's kicking it and doing well, and he still keeps up. You might not see him around, but he's he's still watching. Speaking of that, it kind of reminds me of Strongside. I thought that Strongside had disappeared forever, but now he's resurfaced. And we we just got done landing with him recently at uh, Salt Lake City, which is just kind of like insane for all three of us, I think, just to, for anybody that wasn't paying yeah. attention. At Salt Lake City, uh, there was a Halo 2 event on Thursday night in a hotel room that we got invited to. We broadcasted, we competed. Uh, we got, got to, to play the semis. With, yeah, we got to see me and Mikowski as a duo got to the semifinals, uh, hit a couple of clips along the way. So that was super fun. That was actually nasty. Oh my God. We got to play against Walshy and strong side, Elamite lunchbox. It was a crazy tournament. And then. Fast forward to Sunday night, and we're with your former teammate, Swiftkill, that you previously mentioned, who's put together in his basement of his house eight Xboxes, eight CRT TVs. Uh, what was it like for you in that experience? Because I know when I sat down, the first game that I played was against you, and you were frying. You were doing the best in the lobby, and you're like, oh, yeah, this is the first time I've played this in 15 years, but you were just like <laughs> already back at home. What was that experience like for you? Oh, man. It was an amazing experience. Um... I, I said a few times there in person, but 10 year old Eli was just thriving, man. Literally a <laughs> room full of legends, all people that I looked up to growing up um, and just getting not only to meet them, but to play alongside them and against them. It, it was seriously a pleasure, man. I'm super grateful that Swiftkill invited me out. And um, yeah, man, uh, I was I was playing pretty well. I I guess it's kind of just like riding a bike, you know, like you Halo 2, I put endless amounts of hours into it as a kid. So I guess once once I had that controller in my hands, even though it felt a little weird, the original Xbox controllers do feel a little bulky now compared to what we have these days. But uh, it was just it was such a great experience, man. Something that I'll I'll seriously remember that night forever. That was one of the coolest nights. Since Halo Infinite's release, your channel and community recognition has really exploded over time. Uh, what would you attribute to this growing success that you've been experiencing? And uh, what advice would you give to any aspiring content creators? Hard work and consistency. You know, for years, I streamed six days a week, you know, just one day off. Um, 
And I didn't really see results at the start of Halo Infinite because when it first came out, it was such a saturated directory. All the big streamers were trying it out. And um, my viewership was actually lower than usual when Infinite first came out. And so I think one of the biggest things to, you know, give credit to for that success is just like pushing through those hard times where I felt kind of overshadowed by all these big content creators. Uh, I knew that in the back of my head, when when a new game comes out, it has huge hype. And then after, you know, a month or however long, a lot of the creators move on to other games. Um, and so for me, it was really just about grinding and pushing through all of that. Um, and just once, I think about three months into Halo Infinite, I really started to see an increase in viewership. Um, and I gained a lot of followers also through the watch parties, which HCS allowed me the opportunity to do. Uh, year one was the first time we ever saw Twitch drops be brought into Halo, and that you know that was like a huge thing for for growing my stream because it exposed my channel to so many eyes at a single time, and a lot of those people who people say it in my chat still to this day they're like I found you in year one HCS during a watch party and like like now I still come back and watch every day so. Um, Hard work, dedication, a little bit of luck, obviously. Um, that's you can't you can't make it on any platform without a little bit of luck on your side. I would say lastly, I just wanna give a lot of credit to people who have been supporting me for years already because they gave me a foundation to start with in Halo Infinite. And then from there I was able to kind of take things and grow it. Yeah, it's been awesome to see you've done such a good job and like uh, I don't think you maybe spoke enough about how much you grinded to get to that point though because i mean we're talking about releasing montages for over a decade grinding og halo grinding master chief collection for years like dude i can, i remember i've watched your stream for so many years at this point and seen you play every game you're probably the one of the most consistent streamers over time and it's kind of like if you were just non-stop putting yourself out there non-stop like just providing content and also just being a great personality it's like easy to watch like i think that all has contributed to your success and i think you deserve it man so i'm really happy to see how far you've come and and to see how much support you're receiving it's really awesome thank you man it really means a lot um yeah it's been a journey to say the least and uh <laughs> like you said all the different halos all the ups and downs as we all know halos had many ups and downs over the years so i've tried my best to stay consistent through all of that and uh yeah man definitely super grateful for everything that's happened over the years at this point how many montages have you made and if you had to tell the audience to watch one in particular your favorite montage that you've created which one would it be oh man to answer the first one, I, I don't even know off the top of my head how many in terms of how many I've made and how many I've been involved in. It's probably got to be close to, you know, 15, 20, something like that. If I had to choose one as my favorite montage, it's probably one of the more recent ones that came out edited by Double A. Um, my Eli X PC montage one, Halo 3 PC montage one or Eli X best of. Um, just because those montages, the best of kind of takes my clips from a long span of time, all my best clips and puts them together in one montage. Um, and then the Halo 3 PC montage one, uh, it, it was almost all Killionaires throughout the video because with MCC, God. all the montages that were still around were just hitting these insane clips and they just elevated the, the standard of what clip you need to be a to, quote good clip. And it just kept going up and up and up. And so for for the Halo 3 PC montage, I really pushed myself to try to not only hit like the craziest multis possible, but throw in some 360s or like try to jump off an icicle, whatever it may be, just to <laughs> try to stick out and be unique. That one that you just talked about was is probably my favorite montage straight up. Like I've watched it multiple times over the last couple of years. I pull it up on my stream sometimes if I've got to like, like go to the bathroom, I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna cook dinner, so go watch this awesome montage, and I'll just put you, put that video up. And man, you gotta have like the most killionaires of anyone. Uh, is there a secret to like hitting a killionaire? Like, do you like set up the conditions? You hoard some power weapons, some equipment. You get in the right spot. Like, 
Tell me about that. How are you so consistent when it comes to hitting these clips? So it's a big culmination of things, you know, power ups, equipment, power weapons. You, you need to have all the right things and then you need things to line up for you as well. So you need all the equipment, you need the positioning. And then on top of that, you need the spawns to work in your favor. Um, but I would say what helps me hit Killionaires consistently is just suppressing that reaction to any of the kills or shots throughout the multi and saving the pop off for the very end. Um, I feel like uh, something I learned from Pistola a long time ago was just breathing techniques. You know, like if you're in the middle of a multi kill, uh, you're going to feel pressure if you're trying to continue it. So if you're able to bring yourself out of that for a second and just take a deep breath, um, for me, I implemented that back when I would get to like a kill atrocity. I was like, all right, I need to take a deep breath because otherwise I'm, I'm going to hit the Jaro and then choke. Um, so it's really just about keeping your composure. And then on top of that, you know, having the right setup and having the kind of having the stars align for you with the spawns and, you know, with people not just melting you from across the map, whatever, whatever it may be. There's so many factors that go into it. But the, the most important thing is composure, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. I always, uh, I definitely get nervous. Like if I'm about to hit something sick uh, or I think like, oh man, this could end up being a clip. Like you start thinking that in your head and that can just distract you from actually performing it. It's really like performance art in a way, like the streaming and, and hitting cool clips. It's like its own different skill set, different from competition. Uh, they can't really be ignored. I, one thing that always I think about too is like, are there even enough kills left in the game for me to hit a clip? Because like in a lot of these lobbies, if it's a eight man FFA first to 25, like after you get past the 11th kill or sorry, after like the 16th kill, you can't hit a kill in anymore because now there's only nine left kills before you win the game. So it's, there's also like some timing aspect of it and like having the foresight. I, I don't know. There, there's way more that goes into it than people realize. Like you said, when it's up to 25, once I get past 16, I'm like, all right, there's no more Killionaire potential in this lobby. Like what I'm, what I'm going to do next is like try to add a trick shot in or like a 360 or something, you know, I was, I'm always thinking in my head, like, how can I, if I hit a clip in this lobby, how can I make it unique or how can I do something to kind of make it stick out from your typical multi-kill that you might see people hitting? Switching gears back to competition, more recently even, you stepped back into competition with that Forge Hub roster. Now, things didn't go as probably as well as you would have liked. What was that experience like getting back into competition? And why do you think ultimately that Forge Hub squad had to disband? Getting back into competition was awesome, man. It really just kind of showed me that I still do have like a spark inside me to compete at a high level and uh, really push myself to be better. You know, in that short time, we were doing film reviews and watching pro scrims and stuff like that. And I feel like in such a short period of time, I just absorbed so much information from watching my own gameplay or from watching other, like from watching top players. Um, so it, that part was really fun. You know, essentially, like you said, it, it didn't work out how we all wanted it to. I think that there was just, just a difference in people weren't seeing eye to eye on a lot of, a lot of situations. Which is understandable, man. We had, you know, four like big personalities on one team, and a lot of the players on the team are all extremely talented. Every single player, you know, straight sick, gunplexion, nated, all extremely talented players, and have, have all placed well and done well at events. Um, Gunny just won the free for all at uh, SLC. Obviously, nated top two at the first Halo World Championship. Straight sick. FFA God placed really well in 4v4s over the years. So they're all decorated players um, and they all have their mindset on the game and how they want to run things or how they want to play certain situations. And I, th I think that's what it came down to at the end of the day. It was just people weren't seeing eye to eye on things. And, you know, that that's just how it works sometimes in competition. We gave it a shot and things didn't work out. So I wish every single person that was part of that roster um all the best and also I, I forgot to mention earlier laz he he coached uh dead inside at the recent yep. event and they made worlds so you know it's it's just awesome to see everyone still having success in their own in their own routes that they're taking
I told you this at the Halo 2 LAN at, at Swift Kill is that, man, I had a lot of respect for you jumping back into the, the bull ring, essentially, is what competition is, because it's a meat grinder. And for you to be fully focused on content for what it feels like the last several years and then throw yourself back into competition, man, nothing but tip of the cap to you for, for giving that a go. And and honestly, playing at a high level, and especially in that Halo 2 LAN, I saw you go 4 for 4 in PIVs with uh, Eli the Ninja. So <laughs> I know you still got it and you still got that fire. So nothing but props to you, my man. Appreciate that. Thank you. And do you think you'll try to compete again if the stars align? You know, if the stars align and there's an opportunity um, for me in the next season, then yeah, I would definitely wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, turn down. You know, something that I felt like was worth the the time investment and all the stress that comes with competing as well. And then the Halo Two event, if I'm able to make it out to there, I might compete on a team in that as well. So we'll see what happens. Well, that'll conclude some of our long form questions in the podcast, but we still got a little bit left to go. As we do, we usually transition now to our Patreon questions. Remember, you guys can support the show directly by subscribing to our Patreon. For now, all of that money has funneled back to our editor, Kills in the Night, who has spent countless hours. We record for one hour, but he spends at least a full day making sure that this all comes out clean and correct and with videos in the background as we're talking about certain things. So if you guys want to support the show beyond just watching, which we greatly appreciate, make sure you guys check out the Patreon. And on that note, Kills of the Night, first question is, what anime are you currently watching? In terms of weekly, like an anime that I still watch every week when it comes out, it's definitely going to be my favorite One Piece. They're in the 1100s for episodes now. Um, Jeez. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they take breaks here and there. But in terms of like a weekly anime, that's the one that I'm still consistently watching. Got another question here from The Dead Display, who was our first Patreon sub. Shout out to The Dead Display. Awesome guy. Just got to meet him in Salt Lake City. That was awesome. That was, that was rad, oh, dude. Yeah. They, like it. Like you guys said, it's so cool to meet people from online and then you meet them in real life. You're like, man, I'm in, I, I like you even more than, the, you know, I'm an even bigger fan of you than I was online. And uh, Dead, Dead Display was really fun to meet and hang out with for a little bit. Yeah, so he says, for younger fans listening or watching this, what are some moments in Halo esports or Halo in general uh, that you think they should be aware of? So important moments in Halo history. So you got to take it all the way back to Halo 2, in my opinion, you know, uh, final boss carbon those kind of rivalries that really kind of shaped competitive halo for us and kind of paved the path leading into halo 3 so i'd say halo 2 competitive in general is something that you definitely go back and watch as many highlights as you can from the 4v4s and free-for-alls um and then you know halo 3 i feel like is when we started to really see like crazy upsets um for instance, like the Warriors team that ended up breaking into the top 16, top 12. Um, one that always sticks out to me is that game 11 quickscope by Goofy at Columbus 2010 against Triggers Down. I feel like that was like monumental because Triggers Down was such a uh, established team. You expected them to make top four, if not win the event pretty consistently at that point in Halo, I feel like. Um, and for a team like Warriors to push them all the way to a game 11, this is back in Halo 3 MLG days where you match a team once, if you match them in the tournament again later on, it's a continuation series and it goes to a best of 11. So for them to push all the way to 11 games and then it comes down to, you know, 50-48, 50-49 win, whatever it was with Goofy hitting that insane snipe, I think that was one of the uh, all-time best MLG moments, in my opinion. If I recall from memory, I think it was 49-48. TD in the lead, in their base, playing with a defensive positioning, and Warriors just absolutely bulldozed through the base. Goofy pushing into the courtyard, fully exposed, had no protection or cover, hits a quick scope, highly contested shots from SK, who had probably top three BR in the game at the time. He was right up there with Roy. And uh, I think that added to the mystique of that shot that Goofy hit, because usually SK, I mean, you're dead to rights out in the open front courtyard of a snipe tower. I mean, you're you're donezo. But uh, Goofy and Warriors had one of the best runs in MLG history, and I think Eli's pulling it up for us here so we can watch and react. Don't forget about the uh, the SK strafe as well. You know, he was known for his strafe and his movement even even all the way back then. So yeah, hysteria. This is guy. 
with the sniper right now. He was known for hitting some crazy snipes. Man, I had he the dual touch right here. Oh, he this man knows the clip. <laughs> yep. 47 44, TD up three, now two. Jacob playing on pretty high sensitivity here. He played five. Goofy with oh, overshield with the goes to the back smack on Hysteria. Oh, he he misses the jump, but oh, oh maybe but that's it was how on he gets snipe. 48 49. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here, Hysteria. Go through, kill the last guy. Where's that 49 49? So, so aggressive. Squiggly. 49 48. Yep, it was. He was down by one. Oh! <sighs> That's why he was, dude, that's why he felt so confident he had a little bit of OS left. So that makes a lot more yeah. sense why he kind of OE'd or overheated there. And then they win! 50-49. Game 11, dude. Were you guys there at this tournament? Because I was there yeah. in the venue, yep. and it, the venue literally exploded. Like, yep. it was it was crazy because main stage was all the way filled up. And then there was just a crowd of people standing around the main stage as well. That's insane. I did want to circle back about the Dultage, you know, you and Hysteria, the Dultage edited by Furion, you know, who I brought up earlier. One of my favorite Tajes of all time, just uh, to see the, like, because Hysteria was a montage kid back in the day, too. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. He was actually a montage kid who made the transition into competitive as well. So just one of my favorite videos. Love that one. Yeah, definitely. Probably the one that I'm most proud of. I had the most insane clips. I really was only recording clips for a couple of months for that video, too. Like, that was just... I was on that team with Brad, Best Man, and Smoltz, Anti-Gravity. Shout out to those guys. Uh, and we were just scrimming top teams all the time. So that's why there's a lot of clips on, like, Final Boss and Straight Rippin'. Um, yep. And then I, I guess part of the montage, I was teaming with Hysteria, Cloud, and Joe as well. So it was like between Dallas and Orlando of 2007, where all those clips were from like my scrims in that time frame. And it's some crazy quad shots, like the quad shot on T-squared to end the montage for the triple kill. That's probably one of my best clips for sure. So, uh, yeah, yeah pr appreciate the props on that. All right, wrapping things up here in this episode with Eli X, we got our quick cues, and we'll start off with the first question we usually have. What are your settings? Uh, Halo Infinite, I currently play on 994 in terms of vertical, horizontal, and acceleration. Uh, bumper jumper for the button layout. Super fast. Montage kids always play on a little bit higher sensitivity because, yeah, you have that skill ceiling goes a little bit. It's a lot like playing on a mouse and keyboard. You got a little bit higher skill ceiling. Harder to hit your shots, but the risk reward factor is there when you pull off the shit that we see Eli X hit. So, uh, moving along, what is your Mount Rushmore of Halo montages? Top four all time. The, so, the specific video or the yep. person? Okay. Specific wow. Taj. Uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's a tough question. Okay. So, one that has to go up there for me is Campy Apex. That's like one of the best montages of all time, in my opinion. Um, I would also put, let's see, Wal the Walshy, uh, was it Walshy Montage 2? What yep. The one that was edited by Zola? That, with the sniper the bullet. bullet in the intro? Yeah, that's just like, you know, you really, you can't, <laughs> you can't, uh, do much, much more than that. And then I think another one that, that has to go up there for me is the Straight Rippin Montage, just because I felt like, that was the one of the first times we saw like such next level editing, like a full pro team putting out a montage. Um, that one was just one of the best of all time. And then let's see, I'm trying to think. I and forgive me, anyone that you know, I'm probably gonna forget an insane montage. <laughs> um, so you know, please, please so forgive your, me to all my Todgers out there. Your Mount Rushmore, so don't, don't yeah, worry. <laughs> true, true. Um, I think for the last one, I might have to go with uh, Hyena Mastery because mm. he really pushed the limits of Halo 3 and did some of the most unique things we've ever seen with, you know, icicle jumps, cone launches, and just 
that he kind of also uh, did this whole lightning snipe thing where he wasn't just going for normal quick scopes anymore. He, it was a quick scope, and then you immediately turn and do a full 180 as you hit the shot, kind of. So, um, yeah, I'd say, you know, if I if I had to break it down to that, I'd put Campy Apex, Straight Rippin, Team Taj, uh, Hyena, Mastery, and I already forgot the fourth one that I said. <laughs> Straight Rippin' Taj? No, I he said, said that he one. Said that. Oh, the Walshie. Uh, Walshie, Walshie. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, nice. And we'll, we'll try to ma make sure we uh, link those in the description. That way you guys can not only watch this ep episode, consume all the Halo content till your heart's uh, content. You can go watch uh, some of these videos that we've brought up throughout the episode as well. Uh, what's a Halo hot take that might have you roasted on social media for? I mean, for me, it's like... I don't know. I don't even think it's a hot take. I, f I feel like Halo 4 is just was just awful in my opinion. <laughs> and I do think Max. I think outside of the campaign, you know, I just think it was the multiplayer was just terrible. I feel like it really strayed away from what we knew and loved in terms of Halo. Um, and I know there's probably some Halo 4 fans out there that that will hate hearing me say that. Um, I think a lot of us are probably in ag agreement on that where Halo 4 was probably probably the least favorite out of the franchise for a lot of people, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily a hot take, but <laughs> that's the best I, I got right now. Tool, tools might uh, disagree since he's a big uh, H4, H5 kid, but uh, uh, it all makes we'll sense, move on so. from that. Yeah, yeah, tools. <laughs> don't need to talk about him. Uh, favorite weapon throughout Halo? Sniper rifle. No question. From which Halo? Uh, I gotta go with Halo Three, just because I think it. I think that's the one that takes the most skill and had the most satisfying like payoff for for practicing with it. Halo Three was one of the first games where we saw like really designated like you let this person pick up the sniper, like snipe yeah. down, for instance. Like you know, you always let him get the H three snipe. But then as as other Halos came out, like I feel like Halo Five, like even though you still want a player like snipe down to have the sniper you can give it to almost anyone on your team just because of, you know, like the the bullet magnetism and all these different factors that come into play. Favorite duo? My favorite duo is my boy Trunks, Jeff. Anytime I game with him, our, our vibes are just immaculate. We always fry and uh, we're just like casually dominating and laughing and making jokes at the same time. So I got I to gotta give props to my boy Jeff. Yeah, Trunk's still a, a a guy that's hitting goaded clips on the timeline, so make sure you check him out on Twitter. Uh, favorite Halo title? So, for me, I always have this big toss-up between Halo 2 and Halo 3, because um, they're both revolutionary games, but I think if I had to pick one, I'd go with Halo 2, just because it really changed the landscape of gaming, in my opinion. Even just with the Xbox Live integration, the in-game friends list that you could send invites on and everything like that. I feel like gaming really changed after Halo 2, so I'd have to pick Halo 2. It's funny you say that. I think in recent memory, coming back to Halo with Halo Infinite, if someone asked me that, I'd say the same thing, Halo 3. But the more I look back on it, I think Halo 2 as well for just the revolutionary standards it set. Even something like matchmaking. That was the first time in gaming history that matchmaking was introduced, which people had an uproar over that they couldn't go into uh counter-strike uh style lobbies and just you know go place dust over and over and uh, again with their friends which you could yeah. do in custom games but matchmaking with the rank system one through 50 I i'm right there with you i've also changed my mind and opinion towards clan Halo 2, matches clan Dude. matches but it, it's like a 51 49 edge because both <laughs> games are just absolutely goaded in their own right last question here in the quick cues what is your fondest halo memory throughout all of the glorious years of halo so I'd say fondest Halo memory is probably uh, 2017 DreamHack Atlanta. Uh, I got the chance to go and stay at my friend Murph's house, and it was called Camp Fest 2017 because it was Campy was there, and all all my you know good friends Trunks, Apple Fanatic, Ishi, Howie, and just so many people were there, and. Uh, like it really kind of transcended at Halo events for me because it was the first time where I had a friend and his family kind of bring us all into their home and let us stay there throughout the weekend. Um, and then we would drive down to the venue each day rather than, you know, sleeping on the floor outside of a hotel room or just having, you know, a, a floor inside a hotel room to sleep in. <laughs> um, 
the, the think... upgrade to to go from a floor outside to a floor inside like oh we're we're doing well this is great i remember Love to be people here. sleeping on air conditioning units and stuff <laughs> what, yep. where, whatever they could find in the bathtub the little people would sleep yep. anywhere so yeah yep. i think that uh that 2017 atlanta event really kind of it, it was just such a special thing and like we we even had like uh one of the guys that was there made t-shirts for us and stuff so it's just <laughs> one of those things that's like cemented in my memory forever you know small follow-up to that campy kind of disappeared after that event so like that's another reason why that was like our last big hurrah with campy before he kind of you know stopped streaming and stuff the swan song Eli X has been a huge supporter of the Tide the Litter podcast. He's watched all of the episodes with his community. So we thought we'd throw it to him to create a tier list to rank all of the episodes of Tide the Litter up to this point. We've got them all listed there below with our thumbnails. So Eli X, I'm going to put you on the hot seat once again. The uh, If you thought Mount Rushmore of Halo montages was hard enough, now you got to rank the Tide the Leader episodes 1 through 15, I think we uh, we recorded at this point. So let her rip. All right. So we got all the episodes here. Uh, we'll start with the very first episode, Best Man. Where do you think this one ranks? Uh, very first episode. It's got to be S tier. Okay, awesome. Shout out to Nick. All right, Mick Wynn. Mick Wynn, absolutely amazing guy. Uh, some great insight from being, you know, on the on the other side of things with 343 as well. You definitely got to put that one in S tier. Okay, starting off good. How about Bound? You could have Bound by himself on the YouTube video with no questions being asked and just listening to his his internal dialogue that he uh, that he lets out is that's S tier on its own. Okay. All right, we got formal next. Formal, one of the goats. You you know, nothing but respect and love for formal. Uh S tier. Also he brought up Campy during his uh his interview as well. So True. Put him at the top of S tier. <laughs> okay, he goes first place S tier. Yeah. All right, Renegade. I would say definitely S tier as well for Renegade. Okay. Woodum. Woodum, the best mouse and key player that we've seen so far in Halo. I mean, he's got the S button on his keyboard. You got to put him in S tier. <laughs> <laughs> Noticing a trend here. All right, how about T squared? <laughs> T squared. I mean, just look at the second letter in his gamer tag. Definitely S tier. Yeah. Right. Collect. <laughs> Collect, another one of those people in the community whose personality is just so funny and trolly and big up-and-comer in the scene, so I'd say definitely S-tier as well. <laughs> what about Boo Boo Boo? I mean, Boo 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 is the, the same, you know? He's one of those people who's who seems very calm and reserved, but once you get to see like his personality and his goofy side, he's one of the funniest people in the league, no question, and uh, definitely S-tier as well. Big facts. Shout out to Jesse. All right, Frosty. If you see Frosty in any category, you're definitely putting him in S tier. Facts. I feel like if somebody wants to learn about like the mentality of a champion, that's one of the best episodes to watch because like he just embodies the mentality of a champion to me. Yeah. yeah. You you learn so much just from listening to him talk about his experiences and you know how he's handled everything he's been through. Big facts. All right, suppressed. Suppressed, man. One of my favorite Halo Infinite players. Um, really, you know, he was a god in Halo 5, but really kind of exploded onto the scene in uh, Halo Infinite. And I love that whole Shopify Rebellion squad as well, so definitely going to throw him in S. Lucid? Just off the hair alone, <laughs> Lucid's S tier, you know? There's no question about it. And and listening, another person, you know, Lucid, listening to him talk about things, the way that he breaks things down and just hearing... You know, the way that he analyzes things and kind of breaks down certain situations is it's a pleasure to listen to. Definite S tier. All right. SLG. SLG is awesome, man. One of the most talented players in the league. If you follow him on Twitter, he posts some of the most insane sniping clips that I've ever seen. And uh, definitely you're going to throw him in S tier as well. <laughs> All right. Women of Halo. Obviously, we support the women of Halo 100%. We support all our ladies in the scene, so definitely throw them in S tier as well. And you got to rank your experience on the show. Where are you putting this one? If we're going off of my experience that I had talking with, with you guys here, definitely one of the best experiences, man. It really just felt like we were sitting down having a conversation rather than you know filming a podcast. So 
got to put that up there in S tier as well, just for the experience. All right, very dynamic placement here uh, <laughs> across the board. Real quick though, I'm gonna put Eli X on the spot. I'm not gonna have him rank everything because I I agree. Uh, a little biased. I think every episode is S tier, but let's 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 get down to the top three. Yeah, you got formal at number one. You can move him around if you'd like. But let's okay. let's identify your top three tied to leader episodes. If someone's new to the stream and they want to start with three, which ones would it be? I'd say formal frosty at number two and then for the number three i'd probably put lucid up there just because like i said earlier listening to him break things down and just the way that he kind of narrates his experience is it's just a pleasure to listen to so obviously no disrespect towards any of the other people on the list but those are just my three personal favorite all right that will do it for another fun-filled episode of tied the leader eli x before we let you go are there any Final thoughts that you have, and where can we support you guys on social? Uh, final thoughts. Just thank you guys so much for having me on the podcast. Keep doing what you guys are doing. You're killing it, and uh, the, it's definitely a pleasure for the community to have you guys making these videos. Um, in terms of where you guys can find me and support me, uh, I stream on Twitch very consistently. It's Eli underscore X. Uh, Twitter is the same, just two E's at the front. Uh, you can find all my socials on my Twitch page. So. If you want to support me in any way, just pop by the stream sometime, say what's up, and uh, yeah. Hey, let's go, baby. Killionaire in the books?